Cool. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks everyone for coming on this evening. Um, so uh, I'm Ben, I'm the uh, director here. Um, so essentially what that really means is uh, I kind of just uh, we try to figure out what problems are important to people and try and solve them using technology. So, uh, you know, the past kind of uh, you know, 18 months or so we've been really building uh, now both of the best of this bank, so that's really good. Uh, and we, through doing that, we've really been speaking to customers, which meant that we're including many of you guys. Um, we, we really realised that you know, people have very similar problems with their business banking as they, uh, they do with their personal banking. And so, at the start of this year, we basically decided to kind of take a small group of people here and really just go <coughs> and tackle one of those large problems people have with their money. Uh, and so, uh, over the past kind of three months, we've really just been building a business bank account. So, uh, really, you know, often these events are kind of community events where we tell everyone what we're up to, but really, the last three months, we've really been focusing a large part of our efforts on building kind of a large new piece of technology. So, we really just wanted to spend this evening talking about that. Um, so, Jason's going to spend most of the time talking about the details of what we've been doing, why we think it's great, and why we think it's a good idea. Um, and so, yeah, we set Jason to talk about some Cool, you want to be okay? Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, so as Ben said, uh, I'm Jason. Uh, I joined um, Starling uh, in December um, to look after their business account. Uh, I spent three and a half years before that working uh, in Australia in Sydney, so if I sound a bit like an Aussie for all this, I apologise. Um, <laughs> Very sort of weird, cringy accent on my mind. Um, can I, before I start, just ask a quick question? How many of you are already Starling Bank customers? Starling Bank customers? Good, good. Um, and uh, all of you, um, you own a business, a venture business? Or? Yep. Okay, cool. So um, tonight, obviously, uh, so this is being live streamed on YouTube. Um, so. Um, there's a, these are the social handles for tonight. I'm just going to move these photos a bit. Um, so yeah, so if you uh, want to show your feedback on social media, the hashtag for tonight uh, is um, is Starling for Business. Um, but I thought a, a good place for us to start on this presentation was just to hark back to you know our mission statement at Starling Bank and, and why we're here in the first place. So uh, when Anne set up Starling Bank um, a couple of years ago, her vision was um, that we believe that everybody um, should enjoy a healthy financial life. And that healthy financial life should be available to you regardless of how much you earn uh, and regardless of how much financial knowledge um, you have. Um, and I think what we are seeing is um, this idea that that financial life, healthy financial life actually translates into having a positive relationship um, with your bank. And, and by positive relationship with your bank, it's around helping you to stay in control. And we've seen some of that feedback come through from our personal account customers uh, and how much the sign bank app allows them to stay in control and ultimately have a better and healthy financial life. And that also translates into another thing which I think is really, really important, which is what we understand here at Starling Bank is that actually for us to be successful, um, we have to help you be successful. Um, and I think a great, uh, Recent example of um, your sort of healthy financial success translating into our success um, was obviously our recent awarding of the um, best uh, British bank and best uh, British current account. So, if we think about for what does that mean for business, um, what that means is we want to generate that same healthy financial life and same positive relationship that a bank should have between itself and its customers um, for um, entrepreneurs and small business owners uh, up and down the country. So when we came into this um, and we thought about, okay, business banking, what are some of the couple of problems we're seeing? Sadly, we didn't have to look too far to see um, that actually there wasn't a positive relationship uh, in place between the small business bank and its customers. So. This is uh, a selection of headlines that you can very easily find on the internet. Um, so, here, yeah, you know, customers complaining about banks being frozen, um, complaints from customers from small business banks rising continually, 
um, financial watchdogs having to get involved um, because um, of scandals or um, alleged mistreatment of customers. Um, so under this idea again of positive relationship and fairness, it makes absolute sense for Starling Bank um, to move into this space and really stick to our core values in offering a business bank um, which, uh, which doesn't <coughs> reflect um, any of these things. So what that leads on to from a product perspective um, is a very, very simple statement. Um, and that statement is this, is that at Starling Bank, for our business um, current account for small businesses up and down the country, we'll do things differently. Um, and we're gonna do that in a variety of different ways. Um, and we can now talk through some of the steps that we are gonna make available uh, in App Store, in Google Play, and live over the next couple of days, which demonstrate what we're doing differently for small business banking customers compared to uh, our competitors. So the first thing, uh, and the headline thing, is this, is that we will be free for small businesses. Um, and by small businesses, we basically mean that if you are a limited company and you have fewer than 10 employees, or you turn over less than 1.7 million a year, we won't charge you any monthly account keeping fees, we won't charge you any UK transaction fees, uh, and we also won't charge you um, any fees for We won't charge you any fees for doing uh, international payments. So use it, and by international payments, I mean using your card overseas. So we recognize a couple of key things here. So A, business is becoming increasingly global. If you want to uh, <coughs> buy stock from your supplier in China, or if you want to buy stock from your supplier in the US, as a financial institution, we should not prevent some small businesses from being able to do that. So we won't charge you any fees for buying that stock using your Starling Bank debit card with those suppliers overseas. We also see in the market that there is a, there's a drive towards promotional periods. So um, larger incumbent banks will say, hey, join us, um, have business banks for us, and we won't charge you any fees for 18 months um, or 12 months. And then when that promotional period ends, then all of a sudden you're being charged 30p in the pound for transactions, you're being charged X in the 100 pounds for other fees. Um, we just don't believe for small businesses that's right. So we won't have any promotional periods, uh, and from the offset, like I said, if you're a small business and you have less than 10 employees or less than the turnover of 1.7 million pounds, um, we won't charge you um, any transaction fees on that account. Now, if you're sat here today uh, and you have a business which is larger than 1.7 million or larger than 10 employees, the good news is, is that we also won't charge you any fees for a limited time only. Um, whilst we um, sort of grow um, our account base uh, in the business banking space. So, uh, first headline I want you to take away is um, no fees. The second one, um, which is crucially important, is that uh, with us, you can open an account in minutes, not days, 100% through your smartphone. So, when we uh, look at the community uh, and we speak to customers, uh, and when we try it out ourselves, the business banking process, uh, opening process, should we say, uh, is not the most efficient. So if you are a large bank and you have a branch network, uh, a lot of those institutions will rely on that branch network for you to come in to submit documentation. Um, others, um, there are things that we just think could be done a lot better. So with us, uh, leveraging the success we've had on our personal account, you will be able to download the account, open up the app, through your mobile, um, and whilst it's not about um, being the fastest, it is about offering the best customer experience possible. So in our testing so far, we have seen the following. With us, if you're a new customer, so you don't have a Starling Bank account today, our record time so far is that you can open up a business account in uh, under nine minutes. If you are an existing personal customer and you would like to add a business account with us today, our record is 98 seconds. So this is where we are driving technology to make a really strong customer experience and really put people back to doing what they want to do, and that should be growing their business, speaking to customers, and less doing what they are doing today, which is spending time speaking to their bank 
trying to open up um, business bank accounts. So once you're with us and you have the account and you're starting to use it, the next important thing is, and probably the thing that links mostly into our mission statement is, how can we then help you have that healthy financial life? And that's where this third point comes in, which is a banking app that helps you stay in control. So if I'm a small business owner, I typically have two things that I really, really want to worry about. So the first thing is, how is my bank helping manage my cash flow? And the second thing is, how is my bank helping me manage my costs? Because if I've got money coming in, but I've got my costs under control, then my business is in a very, very good place. So at Starling Bank, the first thing we're doing around helping people manage their cash flow is leveraging what's been very, very successful in personal accounts, and that's those real-time notifications. So the Starling Bank app will send you a notification the moment you have a payment come in from a supplier, and will also notify you the moment a payment goes out. And it's just having that real-time understanding of your finances, which means you don't have to go into the app, you don't have to talk through transactions to understand has this happened, has this not happened. We'll send you a real-time notification, you can move on and focus on something else. The second thing is that keeping control, keeping control of your costs. So again, what do we hear from customers, personal customers? They love spending insights. We're going to take spending insights for business, and we're really going to use that so you can understand and optimize where your business is spending. Like, if I did a straw poll now, can anybody tell me how much their business spent on transport in the last month? So, that's one person who spent time doing it last night. Now, thanks to Starling, he just has to open up the app and check. Everyone else, this is something uh, that, you, that you sort of don't even have to worry about anymore because we will do it for you. And then the other thing that we're going to think about in terms of helping you keep control of costs is how do we start to think about leveraging gold? So we use gold in the customer space to help people save for a holiday, help people save for a car, help people save for a first house. But in the business space, you can use goals entirely differently. So behaviorally, people think of a short-term versus a long-term. The short-term self is very strong, the long-term self is very weak. How do we help you prepare for the long-term? And in the business sense, that biggest long-term is how do we help you prepare for your tax payments? So businesses can now create goals to save for expenses which are going to occur in the future um, and make sure that when those expenses pop up, um, you're adequately prepared for them. And um, obviously, you don't have any shocks. So, Starting Bank app, helping small businesses um, stay in control. The next headline thing, which is really, really important, um, and if I was paid, um, if I was paid a financial incentive for every time I heard this request from customers in the time we were testing it, um, I wouldn't be stood here today, which is accounting software integrations and marketplace. Like we fully, fully understand the importance to our customers of being able to securely connect their Starling account to accounting software providers like Xero, like FreeAgent. We also fully understand the ability to securely share and connect your account to other leading mobile invoicing, financing, receipt, receipt capture solutions that are available uh, in the market today. But it's really, really important. We want customers to be safe and secure uh, and have confidence that everything um, is being done properly. So this is gonna be uh, a multi, multi-step process. Um, so there's a story here. So from day one, when we launch uh, in the App Store and Google Play over the next couple of days, you will be able to export your CSV transactions to these platforms and be able to do the necessary reconciliation process. When it comes to deeper integrations. So we are in discussions. Uh, we had a great meeting with Zero a couple of weeks ago. We are in discussions with Zero and Creation about using our open banking API technology to integrate with these platforms so that you can securely share your transactions back and forth. So what we're announcing today is that CSV export available straight away, but very much work in progress delivering the best possible customer outcome for um, Zero and Creation. And then, like I said, like I, I mentioned this earlier, I wish I, I could share this spreadsheet with you, um, but obviously I can't. Um, since we've made our intentions clear in terms of opening a business account, we have lots of people in um, the space who are very keen in um, joining the business marketplace. 
Um, so we're having some very exciting conversations and discussions, uh, and we really do um, we really do hope to, to share some of those um, soon. So if I can just summarize very quickly before we move on to the next point. So um, open the account very, very quickly. Banking app that helps you stay in control. Very, 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 very um, strong commercial model and pricing compared to our competition. There's one other thing that I think is really, really important for a lot of people in this room is that today, talking about business accounts marks a fundamental shift in the direction of starting bank. When starting bank was launched, it was launched very much on a one-to-one -one model. So every single person in this room who is a starting bank customer had one customer, one phone, one account. Now we are in a place, thanks to some of the fantastic work of some of the tech team, where we are starting to be in a um, platform where we can start to have multiple things linked to um, single customers. Which is why, with the introduction of business and the introduction of our already available personal account, with the starting app, you'll now have the ability to manage your business and personal affairs all in one app um, through a new feature uh, which we have called um, the account swapper or account switcher. So you can see here, uh, Lisa Edmund's personal account up here, and then R is the initial per business account. If she just taps that R, everything in the app will change. So her transaction fee will change, her goals will change, her cards will change, they'll all be specific um, to her uh, business account. So account swap is the name. And actually what this means um, is that existing personal account customers from your app um, that you have on your phone today will be able to open up a business account straight away. Um, so it's a very good time to say that we are going to have three meeting rooms. Um, so six, which was the big glass room as you walked in, uh, and then seven and eight here. I will get to your question in a second. Um, uh, is we're going to have staff in those who will uh, help you um, get set up. We are going through the app store approval process, so we probably will have to download a pre-release version of the Spine Back app onto your phones, um, but they will help you um, get set up. Uh, and then the last thing to say about, okay, so what are we announcing today is that actually, despite everything I've mentioned, um, we're also keeping all the other great features customers love. Um, so that's, um, you know, that, that's card lock, um, that's pulse, um, and do we have any tied customers in the room? Okay, uh, so obviously we keep track of our competitors. We're also very pleased to announce we have IBAN, which uh, obviously if anyone is track, track the tied community, um, this, is a, this, is a, this, is, this is a very important thing. Um, so everything that you love and adore about your starting personal account um, will also um, be there as well. But if there's one message that I want everyone to take home beyond the excitement of what we're announcing today, um, is, is this one, is that you know, it's, it's going to be a marathon, not a sprint. Um, Anne, Ben, uh, everybody else in the leadership team are absolutely committed um, that Starling Bank will build the best business account and app possible. Um, but these things take time, um, and um, sadly, we can't deliver them. Um, all in one day. So, uh, like I said to you, marketplace integrations, zero integrations, free inter integrations, what some of the government is doing around making tax digital, we are aware of all of these things, and we are 100% committed um, to having a strong um, digital experience behind them. But we're also um, committed to solving um, multiple different customer types. So. Like I said to you, the business account is available today straight away for you in the room, for those who want to try it. It will be available in the App Store and Google Play over the coming days for um, the rest of our customers. Um, but we can't, unfortunately, cater for everybody. So if you uh, own a limited company um, and you are a significant person of control, then we're able to cater for you today. And the guys are working very hard behind the scenes to support multi-director companies, um, sole traders, partnerships, uh, etc. So this is very much where the um, the marathon, not a sprint, um, tagline comes in. But of course, it goes without saying um, 
So we have lots of other uh, exciting features planned. So all that's left for me to say um, before we uh, take a few questions um, is thanks. Uh, and there's a, a couple of thanks I want to do. So the first thanks um, is to all of you who took the time out and battled the rain and other elements to come here. Um, hopefully the, the food and drink um, made the journey worthwhile. Um, but, and obviously the announcement. Um, uh, the second thing I want to thank um, is um, the Starling Bank team. So um, I uh, joined Starling Bank from a far larger organization on the other side of the world. Uh, and let me tell you to launch a business bank account in the time that we have done it um, would take, uh, in my previous organizations, you have a 12 month funding cycle and then probably a 12 month development cycle after that. Um, so we're looking at two years. Um, we started writing code in January. We are now at the end of March. Uh, and we have a business current account which is going live um, at the end of this week. So that takes massive kudos to the team and everyone who's been involved um, in building it. Uh, and it's very easy for me to sit here today and tell you the news, but it's their work which has got us here. So I would like everyone to say a massive thanks to the team who's done it. So I think we now have. Uh, for some questions. Um, <coughs> oh, is it someone going to run the mic? Yeah, you guys have a very good sense. Hi, sorry, it wasn't entirely clear from what you were saying earlier whether uh, there is an API like those for personal accounts or business accounts now. Um, and the other <coughs> point, just to ask the audience that, is uh, will there be an opportunity to see you to sort of sit down and talk to someone about the uh, so two questions there. Uh, I'll answer the second one first. So is there an opportunity to talk to people? Uh, so anyone you see, you can grab me. Anyone you see in the site, I'm um, more than welcome to have a chat about it. Uh, in terms of the strategy for the API, so. Um, the work for the business API and business marketplace is ongoing. Um, we should have some news on that very, very shortly. Um, but, um, but yeah, we're absolutely going to be able to talk about that. Um, so I just wanted to ask how you are um, financing the low fees pricing for small business banking. Um, I'm just wondering if it's the cost that other banks have got used to leveraging. Uh, so, uh, so there's a couple of things that uh, I talk about uh, as reference for that question. So, Anne famously said, uh, we don't have the cost cost base of a Lloyd's or a HSBC. Uh, we also uh, host all of our technology securely in the cloud, uh, which means we um, have um, the ability to offer that pricing. Um, if you ask me, okay, where will we look to make business banking promotion in the future? Obviously, good marketplace and securely connected with partners. And there may be something else we could do. And then the other question is, well, is the, the kind of more complex the business, the more likely those, those kind of, the less there is an expectation that the service is going to be going to be So, for example, I mean, again, to launch uh, the kind of facilities around the commission model is more of the et cetera, they're the kind of services that we may expect to be charged for. But it's really important to understand because it's kind of, you know, those the people who are really starting to offer this. Twitter from Ben Bagley. How would you handle end of year tax, self assessment, for example, or digital tax when that gets launched? Uh, so uh, I think we would handle it uh, in a variety of ways. And Ben, first of all, thank you for uh, tuning in. Um, so uh, obviously, we want to make the process as seamless as possible. So uh, the ability to very easily uh, export. Uh, 
your um, statements uh, and share those with your accountant um, is obviously very, very um, critical. Uh, we want we want to make that as easy as possible. Um, and then the second thing, obviously, um, as I alluded to, is that working very closely with uh, HMRC and other people around making tax digital, um, and then being able to support that um, when, sort of when it makes sense to do so. Um, this is about your integrations. Um, I noticed as you say you're in conversation with Zero and uh, Creation, and I use quite a few cloud-based apps, and nobody seems to call stage business clouds. I don't think that's a bad investment if I need to switch now. But if you have any plans to work with it. Um, so, uh, so, so, um, so, so, so the, the, good, the good news is, is that we are we are actually speaking with Sage. Um, I would probably say to you, it's not not as advanced um, as other ones. So, um, I, I'm not going to make a firm commitment here that it's coming. Um, but the story that is important is that when it comes to kind of integration, we're, we're trying not to give any stone unturned. So all of the big ones, and we're very keen to have conversations with them. The other, the other point as well with our APIs is just we everything's been designed so that we can kind of very easily integrate. And so, it's, you know, as Jason said, maybe the, the APIs that we built for our personal current account is uh, still not quite there for the business bank account, but it's very important that we build things in such a way that the integrations we have scale. So, for example, you know, if we when we've been speaking to Zero about the kind of bank uh, uh, in, uh, kind of integrations, like. Actually, the model we prefer is the, the model that often we partly just speak with people about, about building your own kind of APIs that look a lot more similar to ours that can be integrated with. And then, you know, that combined with the kind of model around open banking, which kind of starts to uh, encourage consistency between integrations, means that hopefully we can build something that scales very quickly and then we can uh, integrate with lots of different partners. Yeah, so I Two quick questions. One, uh, does the business account work with Android Pay, as it does on the personal side? And second is, uh, the forums you would have noted talk a lot on the customer side about custom categories, and for businesses that's pretty critical, so it's actually be there. Yeah, okay, so two questions there, uh, and I, I had it in my notes, but I didn't mention it, so I will make it really, really clear to everyone now. So Google Pay uh, and Apple Pay uh, will be supported um, at first launch. Um, so again, when we talk about easy account opening, something that's very famous for on the personal account side, um, is that you don't even have to wait for your debit mastercard to arrive in the post you can position it on your phone straight away uh, and start using it. Um, your second question around custom categories. Um, so again, um, we hear the request a lot, definitely on a roadmap. Um, we, want, we want to support it. I think on, on the point of custom categories, one of the things I'd actually really love going back to your point is actually to get some feedback from people in the room tonight about exactly what they're trying to do with those custom categories because we we have the technology at our disposal to be able to build what is really important and what will actually solve the problems. And so rather than them just going build a custom category kind of uh, tagging solution, I'd say I'd really like to spend some time with people to understand exactly what they want to use them for, and then that's what we'll go for. I mean, because I'm an accountant, so I look at it from that perspective as well, and, and the reality is that we all have different ways of analysing our expenditure, and, and we may have uh, travel as a category, but actually within that, there might be different types of travel, air travel, taxi, train, and actually some people just like that level of detail, so really it's about you giving us the ability to customise Whatever you want. And that's, I think that's what everybody on the forum is talking about. Because I think with some of these things, it's kind of, the, you know, to some extent, it could be a, a more granular taxonomy that <coughs> is more applicable, and you know, that's what that is because we want to, and otherwise it could be. Custom tagging, in which case that maybe solves a slightly different problem. So it's something where I'd like to understand a little bit more detail exactly what the use cases are, and then we can go build the right things. Yeah, just one last 
good one. Uh, I had two questions for you. Uh, the first one is about uh, like the switch guarantee. Uh, so, will the current account switch guarantee work to start the bank? It's, yeah, it's tricky. Well, that's a good uh, also, overdraft. So is that going to be like in the roadmap for later on, like business overdraft? Uh, yeah, so uh, first question, um, current account switching service. Um, so not available from day one, um, but we uh, have had conversations with them around um, making the current account switching service available for uh, business. Um, what uh, what actually we saw with a lot of personal customers, we have, I think we might see with business customers as well, and I'm, I'm happy to be proved wrong, is that People, particularly when the account overdraft is by the way is so simple, uh, is that people will um, actually open the account um, and try it out. Um, and they might try it out for one month, they might try it out for two months. And that trying out process will give them the confidence that actually, okay, this is something I want to 100% move my full bank into. And therefore, they will switch to us um, at the end of month two or month three. So um, that was really our logic behind the decision to not supporting the current account switching service from day one, um, is that um, we think or we think we might do that case by case again. But conversations are ongoing with them, um, and um, and yeah, it's definitely something we want to support. Um, business lending and overdrafts. Um, so uh, we have uh, somebody else who uh, moved over from Australia, um, who is our head of lending. Um, he is looking at uh, what some lending possibilities might be for uh, business. <coughs> Um, and yeah, it's definitely something we want to think of in the future. Um, can you hold more than one currency in the account at the same time, or is it all only in sterling? Because there's other players that that are doing other stuff in other currencies. So, so right now the answer is it's just for, uh, for sterling, uh, but I think the real important point is what Jason mentioned about the kind of the way that we've evolved our platform from a kind of model where you have one phone, one person, and one account. The work that we've been doing really underpins the ability to have multiple accounts for an individual kind of person or account holder. So, uh, what we've we've done is essentially build the ability to allow us to quite quickly launch new currency accounts. So. Um, you know, maybe for the next next event we hold here, that might be something we're talking a lot more about. Today. I'd be happy to stop down at the back. This is going to bomb. I represent a not-for-profit organisation. We have two completely different demographics. One of them, young people, are happy to be in the online. The other demographic, older people, maybe even on fairs than the older people. Then send us hundreds of checks. What, what do you suggest? Andrew? Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> so what I definitely suggest you do is you open up a starting business account for your company, which focuses on the slightly younger generation. And then I suggest you come back to us in about uh, three, four, five months' time. I don't have the exact date, so I can't commit. But we, I think it's fairly common knowledge that we are in the process of having. Um, a project with the post office to be able to accept check and capital deposits through their network. Um, so. That would be wonderful because Lloyd told us yesterday they're charging 65p per check. Yeah. You see. So. Oh, we have two companies. Would you ever see two companies in the same app? In the second last question. Is there um, managers in each country with a few questions? Will they all be able to access the same account? So, uh, you probably sit towards the more complicated needs. Um, so, and that's great, by the way. That's not, that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's, that's not a difficult just that we have to build it iteratively. Um, so, uh, Today, uh, it's uh, only one personal account and one business account per customer. Um, but as we talked about, we have this model where very quickly soon we'll be able to support multiple uh, business accounts. 
So that would be that, that first sort of requirement of yours um, covered. Uh, the second requirement around authorized operators. Um, so again, this new model that we've um, built and we're announcing again allows um, different people, basically allows multiple people to log into um, the same legal entity, so the same company, and again, we'll be able to support that. So um, the answer is, you know, the other types of questions, not yet, but it, again, it's something we're really working for. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, this is possibly something to talk more about maintaining shop on me, but uh, um, interesting about the sort of categories for purchases. The sort of thing we want is um, things like um, purchasing cards, um, separate card for uh, staff that deal with purchasing the units and controls making to give buy things on, on the business account, and things like uh, expenses cards for staff that uh, need to. Uh, Expenses. And there's something uh, fun that Monzo do, a free track, where you can actually upload a scan of receipt in the app. Um, are you thinking of things like that? Because we were actually looking at doing Monzo cards for staff that don't already have them, just so they can mark stuff as expenses and upload receipts that come through the API and you can see it. And the account staff can say, yeah, I'll prove that receipt, it all just goes through. Um, that, that sort of integration makes it really useful for a small community business. Uh, yeah, like ab absolutely. So um, I think there's a there's a couple of things that we, we can like. There's, I mean, there's so much we can do here. Um, so you can um, far far down the line, you can start to do spending limits by MCC. So you have um, merchant category codes, and you don't want your employees using their corporate cards in places they shouldn't be. So we can start to automatically define spending based on those merchant category codes. You can start to do things like in the future of virtual cards. So, um, you know, why do you need to give a long-term card to an employee who doesn't, that, you know, doesn't necessarily need it long-term? So we can start to think about stuff like that. Um, and then also, the most important thing as a business owner, once you're doing all of these things, is actually that point we talked about around helping you, the business owner, stay in control. So having these dashboards and consoles where you can report and having those partnerships with um, account and software providers, um, yeah, is, is, is very, very useful. So everything you've talked about um, is definitely um, on the roadmap. I'm just cautious of um, time, and so I want everyone to enjoy it. So maybe we just have two more questions. Um, with the launch of business accounts, are you still 100% committed to mobile only? Um, and the second question, you talked about um, people control. Um, are you making available today accounts for um, companies that have uh, more than one significant person of control, more than one director, but where one director um, is able to uh, sign anything on behalf of the company and uh, has a 50% stake in the company? Uh, so let's take the eligibility question um, probably outside of this, because we can have somebody who can run through this. Um, the other question around is Starling Bank 100% committed to mobile? Um, the answer is yes. Um, and um, I think from a business perspective, we see um, our partnerships in the future with accounting software providers um, as being that sort of secondary channel of choice. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're absolutely 100% committed to mobile. I'm just going to take one last question. With the complexity of running a business, and um, we're going to start to run out of space if we say mobile only on the screen. Is there any sort of roadmap, as they were on the roadmap, to sort of go into iPad and tablet size? Um, I, I see a lot in the community of people asking for that kind of space, which I don't personally think is necessary, but certainly more, we're going to need more real estate on the screen at some point. Yeah. Um, so in terms of uh, making something work, I know like our app work on the tablet absolutely isn't something that works particularly well and something that isn't that right now. Um, in terms of the weather space, actually, in, as Jason says, I think we, we are very committed to being, remote, being mobile only and app only. However, we also have APIs where customers, where anyone who builds on top of them can 
they transactions, phones, they can initiate payments. So actually, it's really in a position where anyone can build a Starling Bank website if they really wanted to. So you know, maybe the challenge is out to the, the community to see if anyone wants to do that. Cool. I think kind of open banking is something that kind of standardizes a, a specific number of APIs, but really what's, what the kind of Starling engineering team has built really goes beyond open banking and allows people to innovate in much kind of deeper ways. So there's really quite a lot that you can do on Starling APIs. Um, it's actually quite nice to see uh, the CTO of open banking always playing videos of uh, Starling's integration. I can see something. Giggling over there about the uh, the fact that they use the the kind of integration of Starling with as their kind of their poster child when they talk to the big banks who aren't yet open banking compliant. So it's pretty nice to see that. Great. Um, so uh, I just want to repeat again. Um, thank you to everybody for coming along. Um, what I see day to day, um, which is great, is that and even here tonight, this is very much uh, a two way conversation rather than a one way conversation. We want to obviously explain to you what our commitment to business is, but also want to hear back from you around where you think our direction is and where you think we're going. And obviously we are listening to that all the time um, and, uh, and planning and responding accordingly. So thanks very much um, for coming. Um, there are some drinks, there's some food, there's some starting people around, um, network, have conversations. Obviously if you're going to have um, rooms available um, for people who want to uh, open up a business event with us tonight. Thank you very much. Hello, how are you doing? Good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.